Hey, like everybody else in the last month, well, except in some states, I've been stuck at home and I've been playing a bunch of games and working on a bunch of other technical projects and it turns out on the machine I've got, um, the primary hard drive is an SSD and it's really not big enough for all I want to, what I want to do. I don't want to put um, 200 gigabytes of uh, video games and a few hundred bytes of other disk drives and other media on my operating system drive, but I do have a pair of spinning hard drives uh, that I can stick into bays into my server machine, um, my, like a tower. And uh, the problem with those is they're super slow, right? Like, so if you, um, if I come down here and find a benchmark, right? So I benchmark these drives and by themselves, they're on a three gigabit SATA, they're like 150 max on the serial um, operate sequential operations and then on the random operations they're just the pits right like it's not very good so and I don't have enough um, disk space to actually sp uh, SSDs to put it all there um, and it turns about Microsoft has this thing called storage spaces so storage spaces are a way to create a larger virtual drive from a, and a mirrored set a redundant a highly resilient or a larger disk or both disk drive from a set of physical drives so in my, what, what I can do is I can take my operating system drive and use that and then use storage spaces and create a storage pool. In Windows Server, you can actually create a tiered pool where it'll lay cache SSDs on top of hard drives. In Windows 10, there's no GUI for that. Um, so this, actually, that's what this talk is about, is how to use PowerShell to make this happen. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take my two hard drives and my one, my one SSD and I wanted to come up with a single four gigabit, I mean, four terabyte um, drive, and I wanted a cache in front of it. So I, what this means is when I'm playing games or stopping and starting a couple different games, the cache will fill up with the most uh, commonly used um, uh, data files, but I'll still have four, three and a half, 3.9 terabytes of disk space to put everything I want. So I won't be jammed up anymore. Um, and I won't be mirrored because I didn't have enough drives for that, but in this case I went for bigger space. And also, um, when you look at the way storage spaces work, uh, when, when you, you actually have a simple, which is kind of what I did, you have one caching drive and then you can have one or more disk drives, hard drives behind it, and those hard drives will be striped. They won't be mirrored, they'll be striped if you run simple. Another option is you can run mirror. If I had two SSDs and two hard drives, then I could run a mirrored cached configuration. And so if I blew out one of my drives, I'd still have everything on it. If I had a second SSD, that's what I would have done. I would have had a mirrored cached two terabyte and that would have been plenty for what I needed. If you have a bigger machine or a rack or you're like, like super serious, you might not be doing this on Windows 10, but if I had space for four hard drives and two SSDs, I would run mirrored and striped. So I get the fail, fault tolerant kind of piece or failover piece. If I, if I blow a drive, I've still got the data, but I also get the high performance of the cache and I get the high, higher performance of the backend drives by them being striped. Um, so th so that, those are called, uh, they have simple and mirror. There's also parity, which I have never used for anything. So I'm not even gonna talk about it. Um, and I just said real quick, when I made this change and did the two terabyte drives with the SSD in front of them. I ran a few benchmarks and then I installed a whole bunch of Steam apps and it was really interesting to see how it worked. But basically what you really get much better performance as you would expect is on the random. So a random read goes from 1.7 megabits bytes per second to 175. So that's actually a hundred times faster, right? For sequential operations, which if you've been on an SSD is no surprise. And it's basically almost a hundred times faster um, on the writes. And uh, the sequential operations, uh, they say it doesn't use the cache for sequential operations over 256K or something, but I'm not convinced. I put it in the docs, but I found great performance. The only time I overran the cache is when I was downloading 20 Steam games. And uh, that just, I overwhelmed the cache on the write operation. So it would pause for a while to catch up and then you could see it download and put to the disk at a very high rate. So um, a lot of the credit for this, the scripts that I built, a lot of them were uh, originally pulled from this guy's Nils um, blog article and I wanna give credit for that. So like I said, you can do tiered storage. 
in Windows Server, there's a GUI for all of this. In Windows 10 Pro, there just isn't anything that shows you how tiering works or anything else. So in Windows 10, you can do a pool of drives and make them fault tolerant and really gigantic, but you can't get this high speed acceleration. You can only do that through PowerShell, right? So the other thing I showed you before was my blog. And this is actually the repo, which has the same thing because it's just copied to the blog. I cheated. So um, what I wanted to show real quick is uh, I'll walk through the scripts in a minute, but um, let me, I'm fighting with my mouse here. Uh, there we go. So what I wanted to show is on my machine, I actually have five hard drives, which is sort of ridiculous overkill. You probably might have four if you have a regular tower. And so this is my root drive, and this is the drive that's going to be my cache. And then it turns out the two disk drives that I have that are spinners, actually, they're not recognized as HDDs as hard drives. So the script that I wrote that I stole some of the code from Nils or uh, liberated, um, it'll actually, if you want it, it'll convert um, these unspecified media types to hard drives. And that way the software after that will know how to do the right thing. If you have an unspecified media type, it doesn't work. So this will pick out any totally bare, no data on them, no formatted SSDs and any bare hard drives. And it will put them in a tier in a storage pool, and then it will split those into tiers in that storage pool, and then it creates a virtual drive um, that, that will have either mirrored or striped or both uh, based on your configuration. So, um, and that's what I wanted to show here, right? So afterward, we can see that uh, the hard drives are uh, been set to the right type. So there's a primordial pool, which all your raw drives are in. Um, I actually, the script will create something called my storage pool, and you can see that 3.86 worth, terabytes worth of data were put in there, and that's because the other two SSDs didn't show up in this pool. So the storage pool is the one bare SSD and the two spinners. And then when I'm done, you'll actually end up with storage tiers, and um, the way they get named, and I actually created the tiers called SSD tier and HDD tier. When you add those to a virtual disk, it actually moves those drives into a different set of... Um, storage tiers. That's interesting. The storage pool kind of creates a new set of tiers for the allocated ones. And you can see here that the hard drive is called capacity and the SSD tier is called performance. So if you have SSDs um, that are SATA or NVMe or anything like that, those will actually show up in the performance tier. You know, you could actually have the SSD be your capacity tier if you had higher performing type of um, SSDs. And so all the storage is actually going to happen in the capacity tier and all the performance and caching is going to happen in the performance tier. And then you can see here that the virtual disk actually got created with 366 terabytes. And it's a little weird, but it's really because it's a combination of the uh, performance tier and the capacity tier, right? So the storage and the performance. Okay, so that's really... What this thing does, you run a PowerShell script called new storage space PS1, you enable scripts, you run this script, and it will create a Z drive for you on Windows 10 that actually is made up of multiple drives, including a caching tier. Um, and there's just some settings in here. I won't really go through them. You just run this thing, and it should create the space for you. Uh, if, if, if you've don't have any hard drives and SSDs, right? Like if you don't have any SSDs or you don't have any spinners, the script will actually stop because it will know that, will it stop? Yes, it will stop. And uh, that's because it'll know that there's no drives. The tier space is zero. And if the tier space is zero, it knows that um, you can't do this. So I think that's it. Oh, and you can play with this and run it back and forth as much as you want and play with it. Um, this removes storage space. It knows the same names that are in the other file. So it will delete the virtual disk and then it'll delete the SSD tier and the HDD tier, HDD tier, the hard drive tier. And then it will remove the storage pool that both tiers were put in, that the drives were put in the storage pool and the storage tiers were, the drives were allocated across storage pools. And um, that's it. So it'll remove the drive, remove the storage tiers, remove the storage pool. Those drives will be bare again and will show up in your <coughs> in your partition and disk manager. And that's it. Enjoy.